let's get in and launch the Windows utility and show you the new redesign that's going on. Much better aesthetically looking. And then we're going to do a four minute Windows install. This is going to be pretty awesome just so you can see the differences between maybe my tweaks and using someone else's tweaks and how I do things probably a little different. So obviously the first redesign uh, we went through on a live stream and let me just get a little smaller here and show you uh, kind of going through and removing some of the harsh colors and more to the color palette I usually use more of a Nord slash bluish theme. Uh, and then we also added a new feature to go along with the new GUI. If you don't like Winget, you can now just tick the preferred chocolatey box. And then when you go to click and install your stuff, like let's say you want WinZip and let's say Auto Hotkey. Let's say you go to install that and you can see over here, it'll go ahead and immediately default to chocolatey and then install those using chocolatey instead of Winget. I still prefer Winget over Chocolatey, but it was a requested feature for many years because some people really hate that Win gets controlled by Microsoft and they could just break it anytime they feel like it. I also didn't like that. So I like giving people options. So we now have the Chocolatey option. So now that that's installed, we've installed Winget and, or I'm sorry, uh, 7-Zip and Auto Hotkey. So I'm gonna uncheck this so I go back to Winget. On the tweak side of things, we've changed some stuff. The big things here is disabling like PowerShell telemetry and then changing from PowerShell 5 to 7 after you've installed it. If you're a Windows 10 user, you don't have PowerShell 7, I would first install it over here and there. That just gives you a little bit more options. And if you do use PowerShell at all, it's kind of just a nice thing. So this is more for an advanced user, but a neat option. Another thing almost every user will want to do now is enabling in task with right click. You remember the old days in like Windows 7, you're here and you're like, hey, I want to end this task. You would right click and all you have is close all windows. Well, with this tweak, you can now say in the task, which means if it doesn't close properly, it will just force close it and terminate that task, uh, which Microsoft has hidden by default. But easily done with this tweak. There's a couple other quality of life tweaks. I did get edge removal working again by changing the region to Ireland since they got sued in the EU and lost the antitrust or that lawsuit out there. They are forced to allow uninstall of edge to work. However, they've since patched this out. So right now, Microsoft Edge isn't working. We're working on a fix for that. We could use an older tool, but I kind of want to get this new way of uninstalling Edge working better because it'd be much cleaner as Microsoft does allow it for those EU countries. On the configs tab over here, some new features is installing my PowerShell profile. So if you like the way like my PowerShell looks, pull up like terminal with admin, this pops into my new PowerShell and you like my PowerShell themes and just having like uh, disk free uh, and some nice Linux aliases inside of Windows. This will help you get there. So I like uh, this section, uh, adding this PowerShell profile, and we also have the old printer panel. Uh, the new printer panel is very underpowered and it's hard to see what gets going and you wanna change like drivers and things of that nature. It's a pain. This shell is essentially just running shell colon and then a long hexadecimal string to get it going and pulling in this old interface. I always like this interface because if I wanted to change a driver on a printer, you could come in here and then go into like advanced printer options. I don't have a printer installed on this machine, but if I did, I could easily change that driver. And there's a lot of more utility to the old printer panel, which Microsoft doesn't want you to use and is hidden, but haven't removed hundred percent. Just, you can't get to it from a GUI. Uh, unless you use my tool, of course, then you can. Um, and moving on to MicroWin, this is probably the meat and potatoes, the four minute install I talked about. The big thing here is just coming into this page. You don't have to select anything else. Just hit select ISO, download the new Windows ISO. So let's just do that real fast. I'm just going to click download Windows 10 I or Windows 11 ISO. You, this does work on Windows 10, but for the best results, I recommend using Windows 11 now. So we're gonna click 64-bit download as there is no 32-bit in Windows 11. And then I'm just gonna wait for this to download. Now, when this downloads here, I will 
say it will allow you to install it on older machines. So it does a lot of the same bypasses that like tools like Rufus does. Okay, with that downloaded, let's load that into the utility now. Uh, again, we're just using all Microsoft tools here. I don't use any third party tools to do this. So you can see the busy right here that makes it unresponsive. But if you want to kind of see what's going on in the background, you can pull up the just alt tab over the console. You can see it's grabbing that image. It's expanding and mounting it. And then we're going to change a few things inside of it once it loads all the way up. Once this finishes loading, you can see the left side here kind of pulls in and we're just going to go. Windows 11 Pro is the thing I'm using. If you want to inject drivers, you can actually say import from current system. If you're just reloading the exact same system, I'd probably recommend that. Uh, otherwise, just leave everything blank. When in doubt, just leave it blank. And then for a custom user setting, you can just say, you know what? We'll make the user subscribe. And then we're not going to leave it. We're just going to leave the password blank so it just auto logs in. So this is the settings. We're just going to click start process. And we're going to just call this micro win and say save. Now, what is this doing in the background? It's just taking the image, expanding it out, removing any excess Microsoft Store applications, not changing the system that Microsoft gives you or a lot of the Microsoft tools. So like Defender, Edge and all that stuff is left alone because those are Microsoft and their Microsoft dependencies for a lot of their products. And I don't want to break anybody's system out there off of a fresh, clean install. But it is removing like TikTok, Candy Crush, all those excess programs that get bloated up in your applications menu and that most people don't use, all that will get removed. Now, if you do are missing a program that you do like that was extra bloat, you can just go to the Microsoft Store and re-download that if you like. But most of these programs just never get used and sit there taking up space. So the idea of this is to one, make an unattended install. So you don't actually have the OOB experience or out of box experience. You also have a much more streamlined tool. There's a lot of tweak tools and here's a fresh install videos on YouTube, but all these videos, what they do is usually have a really long unattended XML. And what that does is it takes a long time to install because it's installing all this garbage and then uninstalling it in a post install script. This is actually cleaning up the image itself as we do in business, because the idea is you want to install Windows as fast as possible. So I'm going to let this image finish creating, and then we're going to do a timer and say, how fast can we install Windows? All right, it's done. We got the ISO here. Here's the path for the ISO. So you can easily load this up using Rufus, Etcher, Ventoy, whatever you want to do to load your new system. So let's get over and start installing with a five minute timer and show you how fast this image can load on multiple machines. All right, we're booting up right now. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on before I press anything. We're gonna start the timer and then see how long this takes. And here we go, five minutes on the clock. Let's see how fast Windows can install using MicroWin. So we wasted about 20 minutes going through some of the prompts. So we could add that to it if we wanted, but you know what? We're not going to, we're still going to make it under the five minutes. All right, roughly about a minute and a half in tidying up the install and we'll get a reboot here for the very first time. So 10 seconds left. Since we're under the gun, let's go ahead and just force the restart. Now, typically on the first restart, this is where you'd see usually a, a pop up from Windows saying, here's your please enter your username and all that business. Well, MicroWin's already taken care of all that. So it's going to go through all of that. And then it's going to reboot one more time. And then it's going to sit on a black screen saying, getting things ready. And then it should present the desktop. All right, there's our second reboot. Now we should have the getting things ready, followed by a desktop. All right. Hello. I always thought these Microsoft prompts from Windows 10 and Windows 11 always seemed creepy to me, especially like I still remember the infamous uh, 1803 update in Windows 10, where they said your files are exactly where you left. And one of the new features, I think it was storage since I actually ended up deleting a lot of people's documents. Good times. Oh, is it going to make it? Four seconds, three seconds. Oh, just under the wire. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, boy, how about that? Uh, one thing I didn't tell you, though, if we look at Task Manager here, you'll notice this only has eight gigs. So not only did I not skew it, I actually pulled it back to a more minimal setup to where I only gave it eight gigs of memory for this entire install. And as far as the drive size, it's only a 50 gig drive. So I wanted to give you an idea of MicroWin getting installed on a pretty basic minimal system. You technically should have a lot more than this if you're running Windows 11. Uh, but I wanted to give you a good sample size here. So this is a stock install of Windows 11. You'll notice I didn't change anything. The only thing I've done is make sure you don't have a whole bunch of bloat out of the start menu. Xbox, Microsoft Store, all the baked in apps from Microsoft are here. I just wanted to give you a sensible start and then you can choose what tweaks you want from here. I left a little shortcut to Windows Utility on here so you could just run this because as you see, I haven't even run my tweaks. So if you wanna use this on any system, it would be okay. Looking at this, you'll see it's still over 100 processes. So we could run this, let it pull up, and then we'll click T tweaks tab, and then just do standard tweaks is typically how I would set up a system. So we'll go over to tweaks, just say standard tweaks, and then I would just leave it here. Uh, maybe add a few more things to it, such as maybe dark mode if you don't want the, the light mode anymore. I also really like setting the classic right menu. That's another tweak I highly recommend. Removing home and gallery from Explorer and removing OneDrive since I don't use that. These are typically, then probably actually disabling Copilot as I don't really use Copilot. But I wanted to leave all these tweaks up to you. That's why I kind of left the utility right here. So then you can run through on a fresh install and say, hey, I want these tweaks. And then you decide. But a sensible starting spot, just like Windows 7 used to give us back when Microsoft distributed a, a decent operating system. All right, our tweaks are finished. Dark mode's enabled. Couple little other quick fixes. I also probably would take our taskbar, say, you know what, I don't really like to show the hide that bar, close that out, and then usually I just unpin all this. Just have a nice minimal clean system is how I usually do things. So then I just click this, restart, and you'll see this is pretty fast. You're not going to run into too much stuff. You're going to have a very functional system. You're not going to have crazy updates firing off all the time. You're not going to have anything wild. You're just going to have a basic window system that pretty much every user wants. And then you just choose what you need. So that's it. This is the final product of the Windows Utility. I love this. You can see where processes are down now cut in half around 60s. Uh, and it is just beautiful, fast, simple. So let me know your thoughts down in the comment section and I'll see you in the next one.